It's May 9th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the bear podcast for determined on length, episode number 600. Ooh. Oof. Oof. Ooh. Ugh. Ugh. There's an applause somewhere. Listen to you Ugh. two old farts groaning over there. Like, Good gravy. I was like, booing. I wasn't groaning. That's the one groaning. I, I, I'm, I'm like, <laughs> oh boy. Someone having like a delayed orgasm. It's a hand. It's a. Which that work? I don't know. Do I have a. Nice. You have an applause. Can I have one? Where is it? <laughs> My eyes are just not working. I, I was up till like uh, 4 a.m. last night. Uh, with the right, powder right, right. Um, when was the last time you got your eyes checked? Oh, there it is. It says applause. Uh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> so that. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a little blurry eyed. Anyway, 600 <laughs> episodes. Um, well. Yeah. Oofta. Oh. I, I, I've I done over 600 episodes of <laughs> Cubs Out Loud. Yes. Oh, oof. I'm exhausted. Either that or I only slept for about four and a half hours. Or and both. Two. Or both. Maybe both. 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 <laughs> yeah. Why not? Yeah. Memes. And the stuff. Uh, Gary, would you like to talk to us about statistics or do you want uh, uh, Damon to do his little thing? Well, I think you could share. I mean, you know, there's some equity in, in <laughs> this stuff. Uh, yeah, so 600 episodes. I had to laugh recently because I listened to some podcasts and they're newer and they're like, OMG, we made it to a hundred. And I was like, (laughs) 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 David, you're adorable. How about what, how about when you're around for 13 plus years? Yeah. That, that will, it will will talk like, uh, we'll compare notes. Uh, I think, Technically, I did not research this before the show, so I'm going to completely go out on a limb, and anyone is welcome to uh, contact us. You can leave a comment at Cubs Out Loud. You can give us a phone call. You can send us an email. Mm -hmm. um, Any way to get a hold of us. I think we might be, might be, let me uh, check one resource, the longest running podcast in the Bear community to date. Mm. It just occurred to me that yeah, that might be the case. I think we beat uh, Bear Podcast uh, a while ago. <gasps> no, no, no. Their fi- Bear Podcast with Ray and Nard, their final episode was 600. Ah. Oh. Because I just went to their website. Well, BC, well, BBC 600 was the final episode. Okay. So we so next week we'll <laughs> beat them. The thing is, they did they then transition to a different type of show. Not really, no. Um, wow, and that was in twenty sixteen. So that was five years ago. Because he, he had started Bear Podcast up, before up, I started up, Cubs Out say. Loud. I'm looking. For, I'm like, Nard should really update their website because the last episode I could get to, I think, is five ninety five. Yeah. That's weird. Five ninety six, five ninety seven, five ninety eight, <laughs> five ninety nine. Oh, you can't get to six hundred. Okay, there you go. You have to go around. You have to find a way to get to it. Anyways, <laughs> you have to. You have to find the reach around. <laughs> 
maybe they're really into that. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe they like the foreplay. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, come on. There we go. Difficult to say. Mm. So, yeah. Um, 13 plus years. I think we discussed this back at 500, Jeff, that, like, you know, when this little adventure started, you didn't, if I recall correctly, you didn't know it was going to happen like this. No. <laughs> A, well, and and we even had kind of a year off the uh, uh, when we trend, when my two other co-hosts, actually three other co-hosts, ended up just not wanting to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. And then I tried to to keep it alive by doing like monthly, and that didn't quite work. And then I was then done. Well, I believe at the time was still bare book. Maybe it was. It was bruiser it, by then. It was a bruiser. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, on bruiser, I just made a post. Who, who wants to? Hey, anybody would would anybody like to, to do a podcast? And this chucklehead was the first one to to do it. Am I pointing in the right direction? <laughs> yeah, I'm pointing in the right direction. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> He's to my left, uh, and the rest was history. <laughs> so, it was almost ten years ago when the that uh, break took place, mm-hmm. because that was uh, the end of May of 2011, and then uh, the next generation uh, started up in March of 2012. Yeah. So not quite a full, full year, year, like about uh, nine plus months. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite March 10. 4th, 2012 was the TNG, is the TNG anniversary. And this is one of the reasons why we say over 200, because the TNG ep- episodes, we, we did a few that were labeled as TNG before we actually went back to the regular numbering. That's true because technically those six episodes aren't counted in the numerical six hundred. Correct. So in theory, we're at mm-hmm. six hundred. <laughs> uh, we actually hit six hundred like a little bit ago. Let me figure this math out. Math uh, is hard. One, two, three, four. So that would have been around March twenty third. Um, which was a couple weeks into, yeah. Anyways, I was trying to do the math about nine years ago. Yeah. So consistently since episode one fifty five till now, we have been putting out new episodes. Mm-hmm. Fairly consistently. Yeah. Pretty much every week, couple... except when we have weird things called random restarts. Um, <laughs> and like flashbacks and weeks off and not mm-hmm. many, but yeah, little things like that. Things that we can do because we, you know, create this ourselves and, you know, life is hard. <laughs> so Damon's, Damon has been, Jeff's been here since the very beginning because, you know, he's, he's the one that started it all. And Damon's been here, uh, nine years Mm-hmm. I've been here eight plus years. Yes. Dang. We old. It's weird. it's weird to think of it, but like, yeah. Like I was the other day, I was like, like why? But I'm realizing I have gone through, uh, I was like looking, I was looking, actually looking at um, COL 200. Um, and I'm looking at like, um, I was probably using, like the camera on my laptop. <laughs> I had my old like two prong headset in the in the draft and I was sitting in my old apartment. Yeah, it feels weird when I think about it and I was like, oh wow, like that's it's been a minute. It's been a while. Um Oh, I just realized, ta- listening to you, David, talk about your old apartment, I started the podcast. 
how did I do that? <laughs> you were no, because I you were on as a guest. I was, but I wasn't. Oh, we were doing audio only. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to think of how I did it because I was in my previous mm-hmm. residence apartment. Mm-hmm. Well, the house that I was sharing uh, with my friend who owned the house, I was like, because I've been here eight years as of this month. Mm-hmm. So four four months prior, <laughs> I was uh, in a different location. So I must have been calling in. I mean, we were doing Skype, but I must have been calling in uh, from there. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I didn't even remember that. So Jeff, I think, but I I, I think there, I might be incorrect about this. Has it is it three generations of hosts? Um, I would. I... Well. <laughs> Depends on what you're thinking for generations. Um, well, I thought before, or is the next generation considered the second? The second. Okay. Because it was me, Tim, and JJ to begin with. Then Griff okay. joined us. Uh, JJ left. And then it fell apart. Uh-huh. Uh, I did have uh, Cookie, who was uh, was part of the Cubby House podcast, um, as a guest host. I think during that kind of interim, like between the fallout and in, but he was more of a guest still. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like all the time that was me talking to somebody in Australia that was kind of fun and then the next is Damon and then we had our rotation of hosts well so the reason why so I it's think kind of it's thinking... really two and we've had a couple of um, hosts in and out since well then. the reason I think I realized the reason why I was thinking of it is three is because when I came on, there was you, Damon, Eric, Robert, and Ben. Mm-hmm. And then when I joined, that made six. <laughs> and then Ben left, and then Rob left, and then Eric left, and it just became the three of us. So the, the six kind of cut down in half and then Chester was was with us for a while. So I guess that's where I was kind of like maybe I was thinking three because we also had had three logos. That's true. So and and uh Damon and I are twinsies with the uh second logo. Barely because the shirt is a little small. (laughs) (laughs) Just saying (laughs) someone's gained some weight. Yes, I have. <laughs> what is the someone business? I, no, 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 no. Let's spill the tea, kids. In 13 <laughs> years, all of the hosts have gained weight, except for, well... I don't know. I'm not sure. I if can't, I can't say that. I can't say all the hosts. I should say all the current hosts, because I'm pretty sure Rob has lost weight. Eric has lost weight. I don't know about Ben. Um, Tim Cub... What little I've seen online might be the same weight. I'm not really yeah. sure. And I, I don't well, know he was about he wasn't very Kester big. Has lost so the majority of the hosts over comes out loud have actually lost weight and we gained. <laughs> See, uh, have I ever told told you about my theory of uh, bear weight conservation? How it just transitions from one bear to another. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. It's it's it was that was one of the fun things about looking at some of the like looking at some of those old videos. It was like, oh yeah, oh mama, like how the times have changed. <laughs> how the times have changed. There is. I got a very gray beard now. Yes, you do. I mean, so does so does so does so does Gary. Mine, is, oh, I think it's. Oh, I, I see how it is. I, I, I think I'm grayer is. than I think I'm grayer than than Gary when it comes to beards. So, 
Gary has the one who has transitioned from like a goatee to a beard a lot more. Um, also, I think I guess Jeff did you too. Let me Jeff look at that. as well. Jeff had a goatee. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. When he was more cubby, I think that's I think that's part of the transition. <laughs> when you when you move from from just cubby. cubby to bear cub, I think you you decide to expand the facial hair. Mm. So yes, Jeff and I as white men are getting gray, <laughs> and Damon is black to crack over there. <laughs> <laughs> still fancying a, a, a dark facial hair so and, and, yeah and and to be fair there yeah. are plenty of uh the the hot gray bearded oh. black men so I, it, I, it's just this I, particular one is falling I, into the black oak crack <laughs> more than likely if 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 history in my family presents itself mm-hmm. i will probably turn gray in my i will start gray in my 50s Um, okay so so another nine years if not a little sooner um but that's gonna i'm and that's just me guesstimating it's just right uh he's just that a late grayer yeah and it's funny because if you if you see my facebook and you see pictures of like my brother my brother's only seven years older than me Mm-hmm. But he has definitely gone gray. But he was going gray, like as a teenager. Like he had a spot in his hair specifically that had like that was a gray spot. Okay. So, yeah. so now I'm I'm enjoying that that you looking. So of the three current hosts, Damon's the one that looks most uh, in the cub category if if looks are to be, you know, used as a <laughs> measurement or a factor. And, and Tony totally started case. using the term daddy cub. Yes. Still yeah. a cub. Well, this also, expla- this also p- plays to Damon's favor, actually, given his proclivity and preference for daddies, because <laughs> he isn't looking like one yet, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a thing, and it's okay. And but it is it is an indicator of the length of the show that we've had. You know, six hundred episodes, six hundred plus episodes, um, over ten years, if not longer, yeah. thirteen years. And I Sorry. look, I look like such a child. It's, it's some of those earlier pictures, even even earlier uh, 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 videos that we have. Mm-hmm. I look so young. Oh, well, we all thing. do. I mean, we all did. I mean, do. Wow, words are hard, y'all. Um, and in those, you know, years, a lot of things have happened. Uh, as a podcast, we originally were audio, so mm-hmm. nobody got to see us. They just True. heard voices, and. I will admit when I was listening to the podcast before I came on and became a host, it probably took me a good a month and a half to two months of episodes, like week after week, to know who was who. Mm. Because at the time when I joined, there were five hosts and it was, I don't remember who I was getting confused on. It was, well, as to, but the voices sounded similar to me, and even though there was an intro, it did not necessarily mean I could remember when that many people were talking. Like, wait, who, who, who said what? I think I will. I think Robert and Eric had very similar, like, patterns mm-hmm. in their voice. Mm-hmm. A little bit. Not. I mean, I can tell the difference now. Maybe not now. I probably I could tell the difference then because I was pr- looking at them. Mm-hmm. But I think if I were listening to it aud- aud- audibly, I could probably see where it could. Maybe them. Um, I'm just trying to think if I'm trying to like close my eyes and think of like the voices, and I'm thinking like, um, I could. I think yeah, those are the two that in my head come out as like sounding similar. Yeah, but I could mm-hmm. be wrong. I mean, the, the, I, I could. I feel like I could could pick them out um, myself, but again, it, it's hard to tell when 
you're constantly seeing the Skype thing and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So you were very familiar with them. So right. I can't can't say for sure. But yeah, I agree that the if you're going to go with similarities, it's probably Eric and Robert were had the the uh, closest similar voices. Yeah. And then we switched over to video, uh, and uh, because um, we couldn't kind of record the we were recording audio before, so right. <laughs> and and even the switching to video uh, modified a little bit, right? Because we went to we were using Google. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it called at the time? Hangouts. Hangouts. Hangouts, Hangouts yeah. live. They've, They've changed their frickin' platform, like, different piece names so much, I'm just like, oh, stop. Well, just- I, I think during the transition to, like, fully going to uh, video, I want to say is when I started learning how to use OBS to, to stream instead of using Hangouts. Mm-hmm. It, because... Um, I wanted to play sound clips live. Right. And then Hangouts, I couldn't do that. Yeah. And we moved over to YouTube uh, and have been uh, doing that. I was listening to a podcast this weekend, kind of as a sidebar comment. Um, And it was an interview with the guys that started Clubhouse, Mm. which is a new platform uh, app kind of thing. And it was interesting because they're, they're a, origin their previous iteration before what it is now under i think under a different name was the ability to create a podcast um without all the work that we put in so like you know setting up uh, a soundboard setting up obs so we could have a visual component and then uploading it and you know cross-platforming and blah 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 like they were trying to make a one-stop shop and eventually what they turned it into was a non-recorded audio like a uh, call situation where people could just join a room and have a conversation. So, and they call it like, I think they call it that someone has the stage when they have the mic and that the room leader can pass off the mic. So it's kind of like an open mic, at like a coffee house, let's say uh, only it's all digital. And it's a very interesting concept. Um, so yeah, it was it, it was interesting because one of the hosts commented to the interviewer about the challenges of podcasting and like RSS feeds and that you know if you're if, especially if you're trying to start you don't understand how any of this stuff works and the lay audience person doesn't know any of that stuff they they just pull it up and listen to it and or watch it mm-hmm. uh, you know and YouTube has become the major platform where people tune into things. Um, you know, for for content of a of a greater length, and the reason I say it like that is because yeah, there's TikTok and there's been other things. There was Vine, you know, but those were totally different concepts um, in and what they're creating in their very short uh, term, so to speak, as far as the length of the the content that's out there. So, um, in these thirteen plus years, uh, twelve plus, uh, if you're con- condensing together. Um, we have had 273 guests. Episodes. Now, what that? Correct. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't mean to leave that word out. So uh, we've had almost half of the numerical history of Cubs Out Loud with a guest of some kind mm-hmm. or multiple guests. Um, this does include repeat guests because. Now I have to go pull up the file that I didn't have ready. Dang it. Um, <laughs> because I worked on this this weekend and I was like, oh, let's see where um, we are. I've been slowly over time tracking uh, the information. And uh, I want to go to the very bottom. And... I'm going to give you one guess only as to who our most recurring guest has been in the history of Cubs Out Loud. Hadrian. Adrian. Correct. He has been on 31 times. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. So, uh, yeah. Huh. 
well, I guess that makes sense considering the number of times we've done let's talk about sex and be like, hey, you know right. about sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's not the only one that knows about sex. He I just know. happened to be the one that, like, you know, was willing to come on and be outspoken and uh, give mm-hmm. his uh, perspective on things. So, uh, all together in 600 episodes, we have 84 unique guests. So okay. that means a uh, total of 84 guests, uh, not counting like if they repeated mm-hmm. in that case. So, oh. quite it's a good. bit. Yeah. Right, I mean, well, that wasn't counting my best Bears interviews, was it? That was from way back. I was going to say, I'm going to say no, because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> if you look at that was TV. That was generation one. Uh, uh, for a few well, years, I, I, I did uh, interviews with some of the winners of the Best of Bears contest. That I forgot what website was doing it. That might be including it if they're if they're part of the numerical six hundred. Yeah, hmm. like the very first episode of a guest that I counted was episode eight, and that was Nard from Bear Podcast. Um, and here's here's an example of the listing: uh, P.J. Ray, Freddie Freeman, Jay Freeman, Swin Dunbar, Nakia. Uh, and sometimes I only have first names because there was never a documentation of their last name. Um, <laughs> John from the DADT podcast. That was episode fourteen. Um, Jonathan Cohen, Griff, uh, Roy from Roy's Hideaway, Ian from BearUnderground.net. Uh, Which see. is now bearunderground.com. And he's, uh, Tim's, he's been it. Tim's boyfriend, which I think is Tim Cub? <laughs> yeah, it's Tim's boyfriend, John. Okay. Um, Which I, I think a, they're husbands now. Oh, okay. Um, Fox Bear, a.k.a. Uh, Miss Tammy, Mr. Allen, Aubrey. Uh, let's see. I've got first names. David, Eric. Not really sure. <laughs> Um, Romo from Pod Cubs, mm-hmm. Brad Harris of the Movie Bears podcast, which are still going to date. Mm-hmm. Um, ooh, that's interesting. That was episode 187. I'd be curious to know what number they're on, if they've tracked their numbers. I don't know if they Let's do that. Um, Aiden's on it. Brad from the Enthusiast Cub cast. Uh, let's see. Jeff Rock Cub, Regev. Uh, I'm going to butcher his last name. Nystrom. Um, obviously we talked about Hadrian, Gabriel Majors, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, Ray I don't Ray think you have the best Bears interviews because I think you've already gone past them. Yeah, th- now I'm in the 200s. Okay. So, um, the most recent episode was episode 397, which was March 19th, 2021. Oh, okay. For the movie Bears. Okay. I know they've been doing a lot of Facebook streaming on theirs. Yeah. At least that's when I look at podcast episodes. Let me jump to like maybe iTunes and see if that says anything differently. Nope, not iTunes. That's not going to work. No, nope, nope, nope. So, so yeah. You know. So I think we're about in in a week to become the longest running bear okay. community podcast to date. Maybe. They're actually on episode 401. Sorry, yeah, folks. Uh, okay. COL 49, uh, 2008 Best Bears Part 1, which had Ron Soresho, which I think we've had on other times, too. Uh, yeah. Is that a lost this episode? Is the list. Possibly. Because I don't have that one listed. Nope. It's there. Hmm. And now we know. 2001 commentary on the best fair complete with interviews. Part two becomes a... I have him. I have Ron Serisha on episode 285. So Yeah, we had him on other times too. Okay. For other reasons. But yeah, the two-parter. I'm... I can't remember how many of these I actually interviewed with. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, that was a commentary one. So I, I think oh, maybe we had mm-hmm. interviews. I don't remember. 
But it's like 2008 and 2009. Wow. <laughs> Anyways. I'm just trying to look at some of these. Um, uh, some of the history. Yeah. But yeah, there was a lot of guests. <laughs> Over the years. Oh, you know what? I bet you I know what I was doing. I was relying on the Matrix for the guests. Mm. Because on the Matrix, uh, Best of the Bears Part 1 and 2, if there were guests, they weren't listed on the Matrix. That's why. Gotcha. Ah. Uh, that's episode ah. That's episode 49 listed twice? I think there was Jeff. a Part 1 and Part 2. Right, but you called it the same episode number. I yeah, just but it, it, yeah, it's the same. Th- it, it was like I split the episode because it would have been a re- really long episode. Right. Well, I mean, that was back in 2009. We're talking, uh, what, 12 years ago? Yeah. I'm just saying, like, if they were posted on different dates, which they were, then it, numerically, we, the way we do it now, we would have increase the number by one and just call it part two or whatever. But, but we, again, we also have the TNG. So technically we're over 600. <laughs> we're over 600. Case. We know this for a fact like that. Let's just, we're, if we're so technically we are long. 600 right. plus rings. Yes. There are at least 600 rings. <laughs> it's just somewhere around there. Not cock rings. But anyways, I ain't putting 600 cock rings on me. That's That would be painful. I don't even know. No. No. Oh. no it's... There's, no, there's, no, there's nothing going to be there. Like, <laughs> it's just going to be a bunch it of It doesn't rings. fit. <laughs> even the man with the longest stick couldn't have them. <laughs> 600 cock rings. Well, if you're using jelly bracelets, I mean, you know. <laughs> even then, no. <laughs> It, 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 don't think of it as wearing them but having a collection sure. <laughs> you have this many cock rings to choose from <laughs> okay wow. anyways uh, so Damon uh, as we've been discussing because we've reached 600 uh, tell us about the milestones well these are some of the few that I pulled um um over the years so i went to like i started with just like each like 100 so col uh, 100 was released in january of 2010 and it was titled <laughs> boy butter makes the cookie last longer <laughs> it is long it, it, i know and i'm like i really think i, I like really want to know i want to hear that episode <laughs> I really want to know what that episode was about. I really do. So my uh, question is, is it a reference to cookie as a as a person or is it actually a cookie? Now that we're sticky, here's our cookie. Like what 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 is it? Well 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 cookie from the coming house was 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 on the episode. Uh and oh. Griff Griff um uh, uh always had a joke about boy butter. Okay. Good to know. And now we know. Boy better. Okay. Um, so COL 200 was actually released in February um, 24th of 2013. And it was one of our first, if not the first, um, Cubs Against Humanity when we did a Hangout Online episode. Um, and you can actually see it and watch it. It was a precursor to our current um, status quo. <laughs> Which... We were having the discussion of the pre-show. Uh, so for those of you that are not patrons, which we'll get back to that in a moment. Uh, interestingly, when you go to our website and click on the link for the episode 200, the, the preview from YouTube says, this video is age-restricted and only available on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. There you oh, go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And then our 300th episode was... Air um, released on February fifteenth, twenty fifteen. So about oh, two years uh-huh. later, um, and it was the three hundred episode bootleg of William Brown Comedy Hour at Midwest Bear Fest. So this one was a fun one. 
because it's actually not us. Um, well, it's not all of us. Um, and that's Jim laughing. Why is he <laughs> laughing? At the... I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it was actually a fun one because it's actually not us. Ah, that. <laughs> <laughs> He's laughing at my wordplay. Um, uh, but this one was a, um, we called it a bootleg of the William Brown Comedy Hour at Midwest Bear Fest. Um, and if I'm remembering that correctly, correctly, ooh, correctly, bleh, whew, um, have another day. Some more coffee, I know. Um, uh, Gary and Gabe Gabriel were on the stage with William Wait, doing this. Yeah, during this episode, or during this, you know, comedy moment or comedy hour. Because I think I was yes, there and I watched it. Yeah. Right. So at Midwest Bear Fest in Indianapolis, Indiana, that year, William, he had been doing his own. Uh, oh, I forgot the name of it. The name of his podcast. Um, oh, something. Um, oh, gosh. Oh, that's going to drive me nuts. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I know what you're talking about. I know vamp, vamp, <laughs> vamp, while, while uh, Gary looks it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was at Midwest Bear Fest, and it was it was actually so. If it was at 2014, I'm trying to think if it was the. It was back in okay. December, December uh, 2014. 2014. Which Gary was I'm part thinking... of with William Brown and feature and favorite guest Gabe. So listen to the bootleg recording, laugh your ass off, and enjoy. I think this was the one year that they went to the different hotel, where they went to the the one with the water park. I think, I think, and I'm I'm. It's, Look, it's, it was way back in 2015. That was like six years ago. So, seven years ago. Yeah. If he, or yeah, six years ago for, uh, in several months. So. Okay, here we go. I can figure something out. Let's look through my photos. Believe it or not, photos have been really good at like finding December. Oop, that's Descendant. December 2014. This is great for audio podcasts. Yes, it was that year. Because I remember, sorry, folks, I remembered because, um, uh, yeah, I'll I'll talk about that later. That has nothing to do with the show. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't remember his podcast, but I, I remember his podcast, but I don't remember the name. The name is not coming to head to mind. But anyway. He was doing the podcast, and I'm guessing, Gary, you and Gabe were part of the show? The comedy? Yeah, it was a complete conversation thing. Ah. You can crack and, your joke. So it wasn't like a, a full-fledged stand-up comedy bit, if I remember correctly. Right, so uh, Gabe uh, and I were asked by William to join him on stage. Anyways, um, his his podcast will the name will come to me eventually he uh had the sound equipment so he had a soundboard like a you know uh auxiliary like you know control board and all the microphones he had like five or six of them um on little mic stand so we just had a couple of tables up on the stage because at that time the location for the the bear run had a small theater and so they did all sorts of various things over the years and one and in this case we were up on stage and we just had a bs session mm -hmm. um but we had an audience and that was a very interesting experience to be on stage recording like an, or, you know, or, well, I don't know. Like that's the part where I'm just kind of like, Hmm, like, uh, I'm guessing it had been recorded cause we talk about it being a bootleg. Um, but yeah, so, and, uh, Carlos from Chicago, uh, he captured a picture of me uh, being like at that particular thing, I remember it distinctly because I think it was the orange microphone that I had, and that was my 
uh, avatar profile headshot for a very long time <laughs> because it, he, you know, he's a very good photographer and he mm. happened to capture a picture while we were uh, recording. And um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so um, for Gary and I, um, there's COLDR season seven, episode one, which was released on March um third march 7th 2015 and that was the first episode of the col dr which was our what offshoot um of of drag race uh for the drag race podcast so that was me and me and gary's and all that stuff so but that was the first one so season seven so just so you're aware uh they just wrapped season 13 mm-hmm. of drag race so we have been doing the, the COLDR for six years. And in six years, we have covered 122 episodes of Cubs Out oh. Loud Drag Race. Wow. Which is 11 seasons. And by the reason why it's seasons, even though there has been uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Mm-hmm. Oh, that doesn't come up. Yeah, it does. So there were okay. seven regular seasons we covered. And then there have been four all-star seasons that we have yeah. covered two three four and five because we didn't cover the first one yeah and then uh in the course of all those episodes we have had nine guests um which we'd like having guests uh but it makes the show longer and uh technical issues over the past year we have uh rec- not been live streaming we've just been recording so mm. i'm hopeful that we will return to to live streaming if the Same. If, my computer can handle it so yeah yeah so and then we have col 400 so our 400th episode which was called happy 400th um and that was released on january 22nd 2017 Mm -hmm. um so about every two three years and then just a few episodes after that was col 408 which was released released on march 26 2017 i think it was recorded before that Mm-hmm. Um, but there was a there was our first streamed um, audio video episode. It was the first time where we used a new format of recording the audio and being live streamed and having video available on YouTube. So mm-hmm. there's that one. Well, we're, uh, I, we should say we're currently we have been doing yeah, yeah. a sprinkling of episodes uh here and there beforehand Mm -hmm. but this is when we basically made the shift just over four years ago to every show is live streamed and recorded Mm -hmm. that way yeah and then finally um just a couple of years ago we released um col 500 on march 4th 2019 which coincides scarily with the um first tng episode um, cause the first TNG, I think it was March 4th, 2012. So there you go. And that was our 500th episode. So, yeah. And it, and it had a great intro. Hey, it's Uh-oh. Wednesday, January 23rd, 2008. It's Sunday, December 27th, 2009. It's Saturday, April 14th, 2012. Sunday, March 3rd, 2013. February 15th, 2015. January 22nd, 2017. February something or other, 24th, 2019. I'm Jeff. I'm John, a.k.a. Kudzu Cub. And I'm Tim Cub. And thank God I found my bottle opener. I'm Damon. Hey, kids. It's Ben. <laughs> I'm Eric. I'm Gary. I'm Chester. And I guess I'm Robert. And you're listening to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode, official episode number one. Episode 96. Episode number what, 201. Episode number 300. Woo! <laughs> episode number 400. COL 500 starts now. COL 600 yeah. started a bit ago. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to yeah. the now. But I, I, I was lazy and playing a lot of Final Fantasy 14 and didn't do a similar thing this year for this episode. So. But it's also 500 versus 600. 
Yeah. Eh, different milestones, I suppose. Right. It is an important, I think it's a good one and it's a big one. And I know it's, um, you know, it's important. I think we've been, you know, it's odd to think about how long this has been going, how long it'll hopefully knock on wood, keep going. And, um, you know, we, we, how much has changed kind of listening over that, you know, I know that's one you did for the 500th, but it, you know, it is very interesting hearing like the different voices, the different, you know, co-hosts, the, um, different sound qualities. <laughs> mm, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 be honest y'all um and, mm. and over it and you know realizing like you know we've grown we've changed um it's different um i don't want to say better i just want to say it's different it has matured as we have grown up and matured ourselves I, I, I will say this: it's better quality. Sure, it doesn't mean that that the not as good quality episodes previously were bad shows. They just didn't have the quality, right? Mm. Got it. I think I think that's subjective to people's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like opinion, like but... like audio quality sort of thing, right, but. Right. But like content wise, it, content probably fine. Yeah. You know. I mean, we've we've made a series of shifts over the years. What's interesting is that I had to go back and look. Episode four hundred, which is now two hundred episodes ago, uh, is when we introduced the new logo. Ah, and, and the, the, the current a, logo. Yes, we did a, a branding uh, update mm. after previous iterations. So. I was thinking it was 500 and I had to go look back and I was like, nope, it was actually 400 when we introduced the, the new logo. Yeah. The so yeah. Logo. Yes, 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 yes. This is the second iteration logo. And <laughs> this just goes to show how planned we were not. Because if we, if we had, it sh- would have been Jeff in version one and then David in version two and me with version three. But yeah, okay. yeah that, I didn't think about that. I just kind of threw this out was, a shirt because I woke up about about uh, ten minutes before scheduled uh, uh, yeah, uh, I had, call time. <laughs> I had planned to wear this shirt. I had thought about wearing my um, logo three shirt, but I was like, nah. Like let's let's be nostalgic and wear the second one, which was the TNG. Like it mm-hmm. came later. But it was the one that came out during those that iteration. Yeah, I right. just took the first Cubs Out Loud shirt that I had. I, I could find. <laughs> Honestly, I was going to wear a different shirt, and then I was like, "No, put on the put on the long sleeve like V three, like you know, it ain't that big a deal." Yeah, fine. Um, it's a little chilly at my place this morning, so I was like, because I was debating on a hoodie, and then I was like, "I don't, I don't want to." <laughs> yeah. It's not that cold. <laughs> It's, it's long sleeve weather cold. It is not hoodie weather cold. Well, no, like the the hoodie would be warmer and I'd be more comfortable. Like I'm not freezing at the moment, but um, I just wasn't in the mood to like put on a hoodie, honestly. Because so. what I what I think I don't have, I don't. I don't have a Col sweatshirt. Ah, I have tees. I have tees. I have long short sleeves. Long. I have. I think this long sleeve, maybe two long sleeves. I have too many. Uh, <laughs> I have four sweatshirts, four hoodies, mm. three hoodies, four. I mean, I'm they're thinking. hoodie sweatshirts, so. Yeah. You just so, didn't want to worry about the hood. Uh, well, I, if I, right, that's what I would have worn today if I didn't have, if I had one that was just a plain sweatshirt, long sleeve without the hoodie, that's probably what I would have put on. I don't know. Uh-huh. It was just the way I was feeling. But yeah. You weren't feeling like a hoodie. It wasn't hoodie weather. You don't need to cover your head. Yeah. And like sometimes, I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm okay with that, but um, mm. yeah. I wore one yesterday uh, with a hoodie, not a Cubs Out Loud one, but a different one. And 
uh, pretty much the whole day. And I guess that's where my mind was this morning. I was like, I don't feel like putting on a hoodie on again today. So, <laughs> you know, there's that. Been yeah. there. I understand that. So, speaking of merch and ways to support. <laughs> So, uh, three years ago, uh, we started this thing called Patreon. So if you're not familiar with it, or perhaps you don't stick around to the end of the show <clears throat> to hear all of our like various ways you could get in touch with us and you know, give us feedback and comment and support us, uh, we do want to take some time to, to talk about Patreon. First, we want to thank all of our patrons over the past their years because your incredible support has been uh, very uh, helpful to us. Oh, yeah. Um, to date, we have benefited from over $2,100 of donations, which have covered over $1,800 of expenses and rewards. Mm -hmm. um, that's combining those two things together. Uh, it's given us the ability to cover the cost for having a web presence, uh, which is our domain ownership and our hosting of CubsOutloud.com. Prior to beginning Patreon, it was all out of Jeff's pocket for, uh, would we say, if it's 13 plus years, like a decade, roughly. Um, Jeff was doing this out of his own uh, financial situation. Every, so. every two years, uh, almost $300 or more uh, I, I had to pay. But it was every two years, so it wasn't like every year, but... Uh, right. Still, the the reason why it's two hundred is because I'm paying for two years in advance. <laughs> right, and the costs do go up every, basically every year. Yeah. Like I I have some web host stuff that I'm involved with, and um, in fact, uh, the HIV task force that I lead now with my new position. Um, prior to that, I was a contract hire uh, that worked on the website, and so I had to explain to people because they don't really understand or know if you don't have to deal with a website um the interesting thing is that you have to pay for the domain and the domain is just literally the name the url so like if you want to have um you know uh sloppy bottom 23.com or whatever <laughs> uh you can and you can park that and own it um, to park it means like you have possession of it, but you don't have to technically have a website to go with it. So in the in the online universe, some companies literally just buy domain names and then they resell them. Um, they try to predict the future, like they try to forecast what will be popular. And there's always the domain at the very end that changes. So now most people know of .com, .org, .gov, um, .net. But there's been a whole ton of things that have come about since then. Um, and there's um, been a whole iteration of different like endings, like .gay, I think, is now a, a, a domain and stuff like that mm. tag that you can use. So anyways, and each of those things costs. So like if we wanted to, Cubs Out Loud could expand, but we would like we could have Cubs Out Loud.net, Cubs Out Loud .biz, you know, uh, all mm. that kind of jazz. But you have to pay for each of those individually. And then if you want to have a, a place where people go to to see things, the actual which is website. The website, that's what you're paying for called the hosting. So they're separate pieces. And the domain in and of itself usually isn't all that expensive. It can be. Um, it's like 15, it, depending on, where, on, on who you're registering with, it can be right. anywhere between, uh, and, and also depending on if they have sales, um, can be between like uh, ten to twenty dollars, but that's for a year. Right. And so and it's one time for year. Expensive. Yeah, the dot com, which is technically dot commercial, is what it's supposed to mean. But that's a whole other story. It, it's um, a, it, it. It ended up being just like the the common one, like everything's dot com right. dot com dot com dot com, and. Because of its proliferation, it's the most expensive one. So if you go to a website, like, and this is not an endorsement by any means, but if you go say to like GoDaddy and you go to purchase a, a domain, they'll tell you, would you like any of these? And they give you this long ass list and they're like, you know, you could have .net, .biz, .org, .blah, blah, 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 like all these things. Uh, .government is exclusive. We kind of have to be a government entity to get that one. Mm -hmm. um, but like, you know, .shop and anyways, all these different things. And you pay for each one of those individually, and they're cheaper usually than .com. So 
gets to be uh, mm -hmm. pretty tricky, especially because the whole thing is if you want to make sure that you own your presence online, you may feel inclined to grab these other domains and then what's called redirect to mm. the main one. So if for some reason somebody, you know, put, types in cubsoutloud.net, which is really not us, in order to have it have someone redirect to .com, you'd have to own .net and then tell the internet basically don't go like that this actually is this like and you just spin it over to the other thing yeah and usually so, hosting providers will well or whoever you do the domain name registration you just give them yeah. some information about where to redirect it for so and as as the case is with everything and inflation and all that jazz everything goes up over time so what you pay in the very beginning for domain and hosting is one amount and then you'll find each year it creeps up and you know becomes a little bit more expensive, a little bit more expensive. And so, you know, you end up a decade later, 20 years later, and you're like, God bless. Like, I remember when this was blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so the it, we also, patrons, some of that expenses did go to me building my new computer. Right. So which and was the an expenses, upgrade. like we paid for different things as for, as far as the technology aspect, um, Jeff mm -hmm. had a, a hefty, um, computer upgrade at one point that uh, was a piece of that 1800 so mm -hmm. that was uh, another thing and that's part of why patreon has been so beneficial to us as a podcast because it gave us the ability to cover that kind of a cost otherwise uh, Jeff would have either had to put it on our credit card or take out a loan or something I mean it wasn't that huge but it's mm -hmm. not a chunk of money that you just randomly have sitting around mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't um, like I, I went to doghouse systems and order a really powerful computer I built it myself I went to PC right. part picker uh, selected a, a good set went through and did some shopping uh, and uh, uh, use some of the funds for that. Um, also, it, I wasn't the only one who benefited. It was also, I believe, um, you guys got cameras. Yep. And yeah, we've had a HD camera. <laughs> the reason why I'm laughing is David had no idea what his cam situation for resolution was for the longest time. And then he gets upgraded to an HD webcam. And I, all I can remember, David, is like the first like month, maybe you were like, "Woo! look, look at, <laughs> look at this beautiful face. <laughs> you can actually see me. It's not some like semi blurry bullshit mess. Um, David was giving you season one of RuPaul's Drag Race Realness for the longest time, honey. <laughs> did uh, did you also that, get your ring lights with the well, the phone? No, not with, no, that was my own purchase, but that okay. was because 2020 was a thing, y'all. So, okay. so, so, FYI, everybody, <laughs> the be benefit of 2020. <laughs> <laughs> the video right now david turned his ring light off so you can see there is a very light side of david's face and there is a dark side of david's face <laughs> this was this was what i used to look like on the show with the hd camera mind you hmm. and <laughs> <laughs> because um this was the lighting that i had now granted this was before i moved to the the dining room because remember i used to record on the in, couch on the couch, the yeah. couch. And now this, yeah. But this was, so this was a 2020 ring light. This was got gotten. Um, this was purchased because of the chorus videos um, mm -hmm. I was doing for our, our virtual concerts. And it, I realized I could also use it for um, COL. Yes. It became a purchase of, I think, personally necessity. Um, cause I don't, I can, I, I, I won't, I won't, um, I, I can't, I won't do this. This will have to be here. Yeah. I, mean, I was just trying to think of, of what did we, did we use the money for to help improve the podcast in, in right. the no. and, headsets? And that's it. There were, there were times that we made personal purchases like my ring light, my HD webcam, um, various headsets over the years not all of them uh like damon and i have like used our own funds just because that was the choice that we made and while the patrons have been highly beneficial to us it doesn't make us flush with money 
um, mm -hmm. the rewards that we had collectively put together also are considered an expense in getting some of that stuff out. And we'll get more into that in a moment. But that like limited the availability of what we could do. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not that it gives us the ability to just constantly upgrade. Mm -hmm. um, it could, but that would be that would be more patrons um, subscribing and, and that kind of stuff. But we've learned lessons over the years. Um, so uh, in fact, since we've been discussing domain and hosting, the we just paid for two more years of domain and hosting for the podcast. So well, because hosting, of our patrons, one year domain, but still. Yeah, so because of our patrons, we have the potential to post online approximately 100 more episodes in the coming years. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Get to 700. So uh, we do appreciate your generous patience, as we know, providing rewards uh, to our current and past patrons uh, has been a bit of a struggle bus. I will own that. Um, it's kind of the piece that, that I oversee. And we're going to be uh, taking care of that one of the things that we've been doing a little bit here and there, and we just did it, was review as an ongoing process what our decisions are that we do with uh, Patreon. And we're not going to you know, be leaving uh, Patreon, but we wanted to make some uh, adjustments that worked for us um, and we're a little bit more in alignment. And we've done this at least once before where we kind of shift uh, the reward levels and what the rewards are. Um, we used to have four levels. Now we have three. And because of that, um, we're going to be making some more changes uh, very soon. Uh, in fact, probably after this episode. But we wanted to kind of make an announcement about that first to let folks know. Uh, I don't think it's going to vastly affect any of our current patrons, but we wanted to have a conversation about it um, mm -hmm. in an episode. So uh, beginning now that we've begun our fourth year, what we're looking at is the following. So for those of you that haven't really uh, known about Patreon before, hey, you should you should go to patreon.com slash comes out loud and check us out. Yeah. Um, so Patreon is a subscription service and the base level uh, for being a Patreon is called the buddy level. It's a dollar per month and patrons will get a thank you on our COL Entourage thank you page on their website, thanked once a year uh, verbally in an episode, thanked uh, with an end card for our YouTube videos. Um, and now this is the new thing that we're going to list, but it's technically been there all this time. You get access to full episodes of the Cubs Out Loud, all the series shows, which includes the pre and post show segments. So if you don't have in the current format, if you don't catch us live, then when you download us uh, for the RSS feed for the audio or go to YouTube, you miss us getting ready for the show and anything we discuss in what we call the post show. Patrons get all of that. So you kind of get a behind the scenes uh, access point and you also get to understand inside jokes, things that get said <laughs> Like probably in the pre-show that we decided to make reference to in the show itself. And sometimes as an audience member, you might be like, what? I don't understand what that's about. Right. And that's how you could find out. And that's just a dollar a month. And so you basically um, become a patron. You put in your uh, preference of how you're going to make your payment. And it comes out the first of the month. And it's just one dollar. Now, uh, Patreon does get a cut of that. There's a couple different things that happen in terms of costs and fees. Um you know, that kind of stuff that gets deducted out of it. So we don't get the full dollar, but we get most of it. Uh, and then we can have it uh, transferred over to our PayPal account. And that's where all this happens. Yeah. Also, that uh, feed is a special RSS feed for yourself, which is available on your Patreon, uh, on the Patreon page for you when you're logged into mm -hmm. Patreon. So you have to get that and put in your, your, your podcatcher. Mm -hmm. Right. So it has the, so you don't have to be, uh, beholden to going to patreon.com to get that uh, other information um, and then uh, you'll have access to the to the other items and then also our patrons have the ability to watch the YouTube feed of the entire show pre pre middle and post um, all together so actually when we record the show we end up making a duplicate basically but taking out what i call the bookends the beginning and the very end so uh and that's what goes public 
but the patrons get a private access to uh, mm. see the other stuff as well. Mm. The next All level. All access. Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, the next level is called Uber. Uh, and that is, and that's not to be confused with Uber, the company it's Uber technically, wow. uh, <laughs> and it's at $5 per month. Um, patron rewards include everything in the buddy level that I just described, plus a bumper sticker, window decal, or a vinyl sticker, uh, once per year. And so the new reward is a $10 value gift card to Zazzle.com that you can use towards the purchase of your choice perhaps a Cubs Out Loud shirt or other item that has uh, our logo on it or a Mug. design saying that we've created. You so, too can own a Sloppy Bottom 23 shirt. <laughs> <laughs> that that um, is not exclusive to Gary. Like You too <laughs> can own a Sloppy Bottom 23 shirt. And and because we're talking about shirts, uh, actually, Smashy is working on a new design for us currently um, that we'll be bringing to the Cubs Out Loud merchandise store on Zazzle.com. So if you're not familiar with Zazzle.com, it's a platform that allows you to uh, basically slap a design on variable items from housewares to um, clothing and apparel uh, to different um, items that you may need in, in your life. So I think they have backpacks, there's shower curtains. I mean, it's a, a wide variety of things. Mugs. All right, you two assholes. I didn't what? grab my mug. <laughs> Mine actually just happened to be here. <laughs> I had my coffee mom. yesterday and, it, and I left it on my desk. So, Jeff, which, which were, hold yours up. Which one is... is your yours is the the new v3 logo yeah. and it, it's just the 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 colored handle with the the color of the ring on the top it does not have the interior tone like yeah. uh that one mine yeah mine has the colored ring and the interior is the same color mine is for the drag race right yeah, so and damon's has a different design. So the thing is, there's there as you can see, these two mugs that they've been showing uh, have different designs. And when you go to the website, you can actually pick like a design of whatever the thing is. And then you can also like there's some modifications. So like the one that Damon has comes in a series of colors, not the not the logo, but the handle and the interior. So um, Damon went with the pink because he likes things that are pink inside. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, yeah, whenever you select it, you can customize it. You can look at different options like our shirts. Well, I only have a thing for a shirt, but you can still use that use that same link for a shirt and switch it over to a sweatshirt. Mm-hmm. Right, so basically you take the design that you're interested in and then you can change the color of the shirt. Uh, you could make it a tank top. You can choose, uh, depending on what's available from Zazzle, the blend. So, like, some of the shirts are more heavyweight. Some of them are lighter. And the colors that are available can change. Um, I actually have a, a version 3 white, I think, with a gray of V3 logo on it. That's, like, um, uh, a lightweight, like, wicks, like, sweat, mm, I want to say sweatproof, mm-hmm. but, like, it's meant for, like, the really hot days. It's kind of like jersey material, like a football jersey, but it doesn't have all the big holes in it. Um, ah. So it's kind of more sport athletic. Um, so that's one that uh, I've enjoyed in the past, and um, and there's lots of different options that we have with those. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you can pick them in sizes up to or through 4X. 5x i can't quite recall how big they go yeah it, de- it depends on what their stock is available but they'll they'll have that indicated yeah right, so and in fact for a while i think they're still available i haven't checked recently uh boxer shorts um with our logo on them was a thing uh unfortunately zazzle um is not in the realm of offering a jock strap i know that was something that had been offered or discussed by folks for a number of years and unfortunately that's they, not... they don't really do much that is could be considered nsfw no although athletic supporters are necessarily nsfw so yeah right so like you can get an apron 
and just wear the apron. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, doesn't say anything underneath is uh, not required mm -hmm. by right. the apron. So yeah, there's there's lots lots and lots and lots and lots of things that are available out there. Now to be fair, um we haven't really gone the route of the expensive stuff. Um I'm trying well, to remember what's on their website cuz which is kind of expensive. Yeah, but there's but Jeff, there's stuff on there that's like a hundred or multi hundred dollar stuff like it's really kind of like pricey like i think there's a leather messenger bag or mm. something that your thing can be embossed into and i was like oh hell no like, <laughs> <laughs> i mean we could offer it if people want it right but i don't i don't see that as something that people have an immediate need for there's oh. artwork um and they're always introducing new stuff that's out there, so we may um, expand the the merchandise stuff. Now we do get um, a very small uh, portion of the price that you pay on that. We intentionally did not inflate the prices on Zazzle.com to benefit us, so we're we're just above what it actually is to our cost to have Zazzle do this stuff. And we chose Zazzle after doing some research a few years ago because we wanted a platform that gave us lots of flexibility for merchandise options. Um, we could have gone with Teespring or Redbubble or these other platforms, but they're basically just shirts or mostly mm -hmm. shirts. Um, and we knew when we made this decision, we were kind of getting, um, I don't want to say locked in, but we were going to have some limitations because I know there are other sites that allow you to be more NSFW in terms of like your things that you post um, for yeah. designs and, and that kind of stuff. But which yeah, we, which we meant said. that for descriptions, I had to be creative. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it wasn't it the now that we're sticky? Here's your cookie. Was that the one that got flagged at first or whatever? Yeah, because it, it, but it was I think it was just because of how I was trying to describe it. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, we, we learned that lesson because at first we were like, well, we posted it and it should be there. Why is it showing up? It took us a while to figure out why but that happened. Zaza was like, no. <laughs> yeah. And to be fair, um, Zazzle doesn't have a gatekeep on their website that makes you be 18 or older, I think. I don't think that's a, a mechanism currently. If that was possible, then we might be able to do some more risque uh, kind of things, but I don't think that's a, a thing that's going on at the moment. Mm. So all this talk about Zazzle, and, and that is because of the merch that becomes available with that $10 value gift card that's new that's going to be coming to the Uber level at $5 per month. So basically, uh, for $5 a month over the course of a year at $60, and then one of the rewards you get is a $10 gift card to Zazzle that you can then use towards a purchase um, of an item that you would like. Yeah. For, uh, for $10, you can uh, get a uh, Baron Definition towel. Oh, towel. A handy towel. Yeah, a handy, a handy towel. towel. Gotcha. We just we just call this our run definition towels, and it, well, it technically, oh yeah, just washcloth. It's just marked as so. But that's why I mean technically, as. you never know when you're in bed that you may be in need of a handy towel. Mm hmm. Just say. Yes, Always good to have one available just in case. Because you never know when there's going to be a mess. Yeah. Could I, I really should here. pick up the one of the chili mugs uh, since I already got like the uh, soup mug, which I love, it by the way. Yeah. I use that so often. Yeah. And don't eat that. Don't it's eat that. Big in bed, too. Or else you might need a towel. <laughs> Yeah, it's a... I wondered if that's where you were going to go, David. Huh? I said I wondered if that's where you were going to go. Yes, that's where I was going to go. Yeah, you can get a Cubs Out Loud uh, a towel set, which includes a bath towel, a hand towel, and a washcloth uh, for uh, 50 bucks. Prepared. Then you're fully now, prepared. I'm going to give you a heads up. That bath towel is not a bath sheet. No, it's a bath towel. I'm just going to say that up, up front. I don't even know what the dimensions are, but I'm going to warn you now. As a person who has been involved for many years uh, in an event where we uh, had towels as, a, a, as an additional purchase, we quickly learned to move on to what's called a bath sheet, which is a larger bath towel uh, that is very uh, handy 
and uh, convenient for a bigger body because yeah. child i don't know how many times y'all have been <laughs> to a hotel or in our case a water park and the towel that they give you you're like this don't cover up things don't like, forget your towel <laughs> And you're like, what is this? Yeah. Like a big washcloth? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> Mama, so... Mama, no. This ain't gonna cover my left thigh. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so right along. So, uh, and then we also have what's called the buddy level. So, are uh, you mean the um, cupcake level? <laughs> yes, thank you. I was like, wait a minute. I think I typed that wrong. <laughs> So then we have the Cubster level, which is $10 per month. Now, patrons uh, at this level get everything that's at the Buddy level and the Uber level, plus a $25 value gift card to Zazzle.com. Now, mm. this means that you will get a total of $35 for gift cards to Zazzle to use towards a purchase of your choice, which would cover the cost of perhaps a new Cubs Out Loud shirt, including the shipping. Mm. because oh. you know, that, that little shipping thing kind of gets thrown on there <clears throat> when you go to order an item. Uh, so at the Cubster level, you actually uh, would not only be able to get uh, an item, but your shipping should be included as well, obviously. Or and and Zazzle, a, Zazzle also always see, has some sort of sale too. So uh, right. just keep watching that. And they've got rotating sales. So. If you create an account with Zazzle uh, and agree to get their emails pretty much, um, I think it's like weekly, bi-weekly, um, definitely monthly, you get notifications about uh, sales that are going on um, that they're having. And the sales vary not only in percentage, but also the type of items. So like right now, uh, most likely they've had a sale for Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it's stationary, sometimes it's houseware goods. Um, the clothing apparel one is the one we, we as hosts try to keep an eye out for. Um, and if I see a good one, I tend to send out the info to the co-host so that they're aware. Um, especially like when, uh, it includes like t-shirts, those type of things and they're 40% off. Um, I think is the highest that we've seen it and it's a really good deal. Um, and then obviously it brings the price down, that kind of stuff. So, so yeah. Um, so, uh, patrons thank you thank you thank you again for yes. being uh supportive of us over the years because it's been uh definitely beneficial to us plus um it's given us the ability to you know keep the show running so to speak mm -hmm. and give you the option to to be supportive with those items so yeah. those uh so basically um what we're doing for patreon is making a slight change um, in who gets uh, which rewards, but we've added a new reward in on the Uber uh, level of a $10 gift card. Um, and then obviously it benefits uh, the Cubster level up above it as well because they get more um, in total when it comes to that. So that's the the other thing we wanted to announce while we're celebrating our anniversary. Yeah. Now, this episode is called Achievement Unlocked, Now What? Question mark. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, um, wait. unlocked. <laughs> Basically, uh, you know, 600 episodes is a lot to cover uh, mm. on various things. In the past year, uh, plus, year plus, yeah, um, Edward Angelini Cook has come on and become our uh, Cubs Out Loud sex uh, therapist. He has become licensed. Yay! Yay. Mm -hmm. uh, and he has been uh, recurring more frequently because we started a y over a year ago. Uh, unbeknownst to us, we started a series called Landscape of Relationships. And when Ed uh, talked to us and he was like, oh, there are lots of things that we could talk about. And he kind of gave us a small list. And so we did that for a while. And then we're returning and continuing it this year. Um, and we do have him planned for next week. Um, our schedule change for when we're going to be recording um because we're shifting from the mornings to the evenings uh, due to jeff's schedule change for work um hopefully every two months uh, he'll be with us so uh we're planning on having him on again but um 
it's a really good series. I suggest that folks check it out because I think it's applicable not only to like your intimate relationships, but you can apply it also to your friendships, your work relationships. Mm -hmm. Um, There are various aspects of it that help you understand um, when it comes to communicating. I believe we Uh, have a playlist for it too. Yes, we do. On YouTube. On YouTube, yes. Good. So uh, we had asked in our uh, entourage chat on the Telegram platform uh, if there were any future topic ideas, and these were some that were brought up that uh, I wanted to recognize. So for the bear community being in the midst of social issues um, that come up, which we've kind of been doing that, honestly, over the years of the podcast, we tend to talk about things that have impacts on us um, as MSM um, as the LGBTQIA community. Um, but there are sometimes every once in a while a broader scope discussion, um, mm-hmm. whether or not it is directly for our own community, but it might be uh, more global. So for instance, we talked at least, I want to say a half dozen times about COVID in the past year um, and what that uh, you know aspect means in terms of like intimacy and, you know, uh, socialization and mm-hmm. you know, safety those kind of things um, another suggestion was about the rising concern of anti-trans sentiment um we actually and now i'm gonna have to go look it up uh had uh tb on as a guest uh mm-hmm. back to when that was was it 2019 i want to say mm. uh Yes. So episode number 522 um, was Trans Bear Listener Interview. That's the name of the episode. And TB was our guest as a member of the bear community who is a trans male. Um, And some of these topics are good topics to discuss. We've taken the stance as hosts that we want to preferably talk to somebody who can give us some insight to that particular topic without us just being three talking heads that just kind of pop off on opinions. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but um, it does tend to be uh, like very minimal in scope. Um, yeah. Obviously we can, we can talk about our personal uh, opinions and ideas or experiences, but it's uh, nicer to have somebody who can help us uh, expand our, our understanding of things. Yeah. Sure when it comes to that so i think the reason that this was suggested is um is that yes there has been a rise especially here in the u.s amongst states presenting laws to prohibit um the trans community f- uh on several fronts one of them is uh trans athletes mm-hmm. uh, it's this is mostly in the youth sector um there's also been uh very unfortunately laws being passed to prevent individuals from transitioning especially the youth there are notions that medically this is like you know causing issues um actually at my job someone above me shared an article that is um uh, i want to and this isn't the right way to phrase it. it it's like a this or that it was a debate article so it had two different perspectives one pro and one against the idea of youth having hormone treatment uh to like either prevent pubescence from happening or to or to start them on the path of transitioning if they were youth and they and they wanted that um it was discussed from the context of public health it was really interesting to see these two perspectives from clinicians in Mm. the health field discussing um, about whether or not this is beneficial. And the, the con or against side was saying, we don't have enough studies. Like we don't have enough to validate that this is, that this is safe and you know what the long-term outcomes are and this kind of blah, 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 blah. The pro side was saying, actually there have been studies, um, but notably, when you're when you're listening to the other voice, the studies aren't long term and like they're not uh, addressing. So I don't it was interesting anyways. To, as mm. an art, Sounds as like aside. it was one of those things where it's like, hey, I'm against it, at least for now. <laughs> 
because of these reasons, we need more studies in order to really do it. So it's not really they were against it, per se, but... Well, and that's one of the things that was intriguing about it is even the the side that was kind of on the con versus the pro, they had said, like, to be, to clarify, to be very clear, I am not anti-trans. Mm-hmm. I have grave concerns about the youth, like, being used as a political football mm-hmm. and for us in the medical community to be making the decisions and that politics is is stepping in and it's not their arena. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, it was multi-layered, but it was it was really interesting. So, yeah, understood why that was made as a suggestion, and we could we could uh, concern concern that we might be able to reach out to TB and see if they'd be willing to be come back on as a guest. Yeah. Um, another suggestion was the disregard of the autistic community by autistic organizations. Um, my understanding is that there are entities out there, these organizations that are pro autism meaning that they will advocate on behalf of people that are autistic. However, the complication is that some of these organizations have been revealed to be led by a board or a whole like hierarchy structure of people who are not autistic at all. And so the question arises, like, why would you want this entity to exist if they're not being inclusive with decision makers who are are actually part of that community, mm. which I think is a is a more broad scope discussion. Um, like I'm going to make a I'm going to attempt to make a, 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 a what do we call this an analogy. So this this idea that there are autistic organizations that are not technically properly resenting the autistic community mm-hmm. sounds to me like if and this is please understand i'm just making an analogy a theoretical if right. the black lives matter the black lives matter movement was being led by people who were not black yeah like that's the parallel that i'm making is like how can you endorse or be supportive of these entities and this speaks to me on a on a bigger level about like nonprofits people talking about how you know um and i'm i'm just going to give some random names i don't have any facts like the american heart association um, you know, these other entities that are, you know, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, like, you know, that are so well known, especially mm-hmm. in the United States, because they have such a large platform and such a huge marketing presence. And the question becomes, yeah, but how many pennies out of every dollar are actually going to support services and the people that need these things? Um, you know, and, and how much real knowledge do they have of these things? Um And like I can say as a person who has been touched by Parkinson's because my father has it, the Michael J. Fox Foundation um, has been critical in leading in the realm of like research for uh, like treating Parkinson's and eventually finding a cure. So because I'm part of that, I know what's going on and I have much faith um, in what they do and I see the things that they are doing and I understand what's happening with them So I feel that I can support that But mm. that's because I'm on the inside if you're not on the inside of these entities that exist out there It's understandable that you could you know kind of raise an eye or be critical um, And I don't think that being critical is a wrong thing. You're trying to hold them to account and say are you actually really investing in being supportive of what you say your mission is and this idea that there are autistic organizations out there who uh, are not necessarily being represented internally um, you know at a high level by people who are a part of that community does I think raise an eyebrow when it comes to that Mm. Um, another comment uh, suggestion was racial issues um, outside the bear community affecting us inside the bear community Um, We have in the past kind of talked about race. We actually have someone uh, last year who came forward and said, hey, I would be willing to come on as a guest um, to discuss this. We haven't ignored it. We've held off on it. We were trying to find the timing that it would not seem like we're trying to, one, jump on a bandwagon, and two, um, not turn the conversation into whatever the latest thing is that has happened. Um, Mm. That has been very, very difficult. Um, I will say it as, as this is a, as a white person. 
there isn't almost a week that goes by. I don't want to say a day, but a week that goes by that there is another racial situation that occurs Mm -hmm. that comes up and another life has been affected, if not taken. And it is called into question what happened in that moment. Um, And it's really difficult, like to think about that and, and, you know, have that be part of the conversation without it becoming the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's, it's kind of been the concern and we try intentionally to not do this, but Damon is aware that as a person who is black and is part of the podcast, we also do not want to make him be the representative of the community as a, as a single voice. Cause that's not, you know, fair. Just like we don't try to say that we're the voice of the entire bear community. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But I do think that this is something that we, we would definitely want to, uh, this year have a discussion about and mm-hmm. what, what those aspects are. It is, I'm sorry, I had to catch my words. What I was about to say was it is well known that the bear community has issues with this. Yeah. But the reason I didn't say that is because actually I don't think it's that well known. Mm-hmm. I think there are lots of Caucasian slash white members of the bear community that are either being ignorant or ignoring like what persons of color are like experiencing in the bear community and i feel you know blessed that i have individuals that i'm connected to in the community that are persons of color because they are being outspoken and they're saying not cool yeah like Mm -hmm. don't appreciate not being in your marketing your advertising or worse yet being used as a representation when in fact like if I am like one of 50 people, you make it seem like there's lots of individuals when in fact there's not. Mm. Yeah, it it is a conversation. It is several conversations. It is. That another show. Have, and it is another show. Our other shows <laughs> with an S at the end of it. Right. Uh, I do. Appre- I think we we. It is, as we you know, we're mentioning it, it has been and will always be a touchy um, subject. Mm-hmm. And it is something that we don't want to take lightly. We don't want to jump on a bag- bandwagon on or seem like we are. So it is taking... It is, I think we're, we're being cautious for that reason. It is a sensitive subject. Some A lot of the things that have been brought up are kind of potentially sensitive subjects. But in particular, this is one that can very easily go in a direction that could be um, seen as inappropriate. It's and sensitive. I, yeah. And that's where um, I think taking our time to hopefully find the right time or at least a time to kind of truly dedicate to it is one of the reasons why we've, we've been hesitant, resistant, hesitant, hesitant hesitant to do it but it will be done i think i don't want to say definitely this year but it will be done right um and then interestingly uh did y'all know that may is fat liberation month no didn't was not aware of that until i read it on the sheet here right somebody somebody brought this up as a a potential uh subject for us to cover so um Maybe we'll do that in the next couple of episodes because I was like, what? Um, apparent, they brought this up under the concept of anti-fat sentiment, mm-hmm. um, which is a thing in and of itself. But uh, I will say this. If, if I look at my Twitter, uh, granted, it's curated based on what I want to see. But, child, there is a lot of big boys on there. Um, so you could they can be found. Um, but outside of that sphere, obviously, um, we're still dealing with a world that just doesn't want to accept people as they are. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Sure. And uh, lastly, uh, some of us have already known this. I think we've discussed it in the past, but just to put the awareness out there, May is also Masturbation Month. Yeah, mm. I, I think we referenced it pre-show last week. <laughs> 
So if you uh, would like to be supportive of this, you know, concept, obviously you could, you know, self pleasure in this month and feel that you are being supportive of, you know, uh, that item. I'm not saying that you have to do it in public. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. not going to shame that, but uh, I don't think that's a requirement when it comes to mm -mm -mm. that. <laughs> masturbate more anyway yeah i don't know how that works like if you masturbate on the regular does that mean you have to like up the the amount in the month of may like i you if know, you do if you only do it once a day do you have to do it like twice thrice quadruple what uh, anyways well or you just have to appreciate when you're masturbating like, right or find partners to masturbate more than maybe <laughs> I mean, socially distant jerk off parties is a thing. What? <laughs> so in and of itself. <laughs> Baby, I'm sorry. My arms are not at least six feet like in no. length. You're 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 jerking you're you're jerking yourself off. Oh, just... oh oh oh! I was like, it's just, was... just... say uh, uh, people masturbating together six feet apart from each other. <laughs> Well, I was like thinking you were giving someone else a handy, and I was like, "Baby, my arms are not that long." <laughs> I did not reach across the room. Yeah. Hey, guess what, to... folks? I think that's the end. <laughs> With that, oh. <laughs> Papa Word it comes out loud dot com. There you can find all of our about information. It should be on the website. Just click the about thing. There you are. Leave us mail three six one seal we'll talk. Leave she has an email it comes out loud at gmail.com or facebook tumblr twitter and youtube also this is telegram chat where we post links of uh, when we go live uh at tinyworld.com slash comes out loud find out when we're planning to record these again uh our our recording times will change because my schedule work schedules change because i work on the days we record uh you can find that at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col obviously go to zazzle uh slash comes out loud uh, uh and become a patron a little buck a month if you uh can't subscribe but want to choose some cash paypal.me slash comes out loud we're on all available podcast feeds uh subscribe to us uh uh, uh rate us etc you can find me anywhere on the internet it's box set box puppy box cut box something or other wow okay damon that was not coming out uh <laughs> uh I am Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites um, are on Facebook or you can find me as um, ooh that came out wrong Theater Cub 79 on most bear related sites are on Facebook or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter Twitter is definitely not safe for work if you would like to get in touch with me you can pretty much find me anywhere online as Gare Bear 73 uh, my Twitter which is definitively not safe for work um, is Gare Bear 73 XXX Mm. And with that, uh, say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Happy 600. Ciao for now. Woo